recording has started. Um, but then my first thing to talk about is like on Fiverr, you had mentioned something about um, you having like wrist pain, and we're talking. We you wanted to talk about like DPI. Is yeah. that still something you wanted to talk about? Yeah, that would be great, actually. All right. So, um, first off, like, what, what's your DPI and sensitivity at? Uh, my mouse is at sixteen hundred, and in game is two point seven. Okay, so let me just find that EDPI real quick. So that's 2.7 times, what do you say, 1,800? 1,600. 1,600? Yep. All right, so that's 4,320. So that's a, that's a pretty pretty low DPI, um, yep. or on the lower end of, uh, of the spectrum. Um, and you said you were getting wrist pain. Do you do wrist exercises at all? Uh, no, I know I no. should. I would I definitely recommend, like, and I don't want to waste too much time talking about that no, when that's a, that's an that's easy good information for me. Yeah, so I, I would. Appreciate it. I was developing carpal tunnel a while ago. I used to wrist aim, um, and I, I had a high sensitivity. But then, just like a two year, two and a half years ago, I swapped over to arm aiming. I lowered my sensitivity a bunch. Um, that helped out tremendously. On top of the fact, I'd very highly recommend just looking up wrist exercises. And if it gets really extreme, also get a wrist brace, and then you can wear that um, whenever you're like not doing something actively. So, like for example, you can wear it while you're sleeping, or you can just wear it while wear it while you're doing something else that doesn't require you to be using your hands. Um, and then that can help with wrist pain. So carpal tunnel can, you know be tough. I I had it just I was starting to develop it. I got out of it real fast because I you know started taking yeah. pre precautions so gee, those are just some things your sensitivity does seem on the lower side which is pretty good um th so i would look into those other things and then if you feel like you need to maybe lower it slightly more um though i think like you just have to get used to it the, the lower you put it and make sure you have a big enough mouse pad for it all right yep so, so then good i wanted two quick notes on that so i do have like a full-size desk map yep. uh, now and i have probably about I don't know how tall it is, but at least just over a foot of space that usually, you know, I use my mouse in. Yep, perfect. Um, well, don't need any more than that. Yeah, and then as for, I guess, the thing I'm trying to figure out is, like, I have a uh, Glorious Model OM Minus, I think, and it's kind of a smaller mouse. I got it mm. from my brother for free, basically. Uh-huh. And then, like, I have my chair set up where I kind of, uh, my armrest, I kind of, like, plant my elbow kind of on it and then mm -hmm. so i guess that would just be i guess i'm just describing arm aiming right now but uh -huh. um i don't know anyways sorry, i just wanted to kind of give some full info on uh -huh. my setup um, yeah so i don't know if there's like something with how i'm holding my mouse or if i'm mm. uh, i do notice sometimes like my aim left or right is usually better than up to down like i with this aiming style, I have a harder time. Oh, that uh, that's that's pretty much any anybody, and that's not that's not necessarily because of like how you're moving your mouse, but that's just how the the game cone works. It's very a very difficult, to complex to uh, topic to okay. discuss. Um, but just keep in mind that that's that's not a you thing. That's everybody struggles when it comes to aiming up or aiming down, um, just because of how the game mechanics work. Would you uh, suspect that with arm aiming up and down is Mm. any harder or no i don't think i don't think no if if anything arm aiming is going to be more precise than wrist aiming um more more, more often than not wrist aiming is when you want fast movements on on characters that don't require precise head like uh for example headshots like if you're on a character that doesn't need headshots then um then I'm doing wrist aiming is fine um, especially if you want a character that have faster reaction times like on a monkey or reinhardt or anna but Characters that do require precise shots, like headshots, are gonna, or even just precise shots in general, just hitting shots, you're gonna yeah. find lower sensitivities to be more precise. Um, and I don't think that changes up or down. Okay, gotcha. All right. All right. So uh, then, why don't we just go ahead and get into it? I'll be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about, and then talk about it when I see it. Sure. And then, was this from a, a scrim you said, or no? No, I was trying to get something from our scrim, and we had a, a warm up scrim in that I matched mm. last night, but we kind of steamrolled. So. Yeah, yeah. All right, so uh, this is just from, from rank then? Yeah, this is just a rank game from last night. All right. And so far, mechanics looking pretty fine. 
Alright, uh, whenever we see our Reinhardt get charged there, we probably want to be looking for a lamp. So, lamp is a pretty important part of your kit, and we just want to be looking for situations where that's going to be useful. So, for example, here when we, when we see that Reinhardt gets charged, we this that would probably be a good situation where we can toss in a lamp, and then that maybe saves Reinhardt from dying. So, um, in this situation, no matter what happens, we should, like, at this point when we see Reinhardt's, like, this close to our Reinhardt, are yep. like, basically there's two outcomes either Reinhardt counter, uh, counter charges right and they both go down and in that case we'd want a lamp and if that doesn't happen and he gets pinned then we still want a lamp right so in that situation we just wanted a lamp down um other than that like I said mechanics are looking all right so far thing I do know that I uh, uh, just it's I don't know if it's like a anxiety like I'm not doing anything I need to feel like my hands are doing something thing mm. but like I noticed that I do right click like the using my healing when people don't need it it's yeah just, mm. I, so that that's that's, that's called overhealing um and that was something I was noticing as well there I was just gonna wait until maybe uh, uh, to see if it continued okay. or look for a more obvious example of yeah. it but yeah, that that comes down to awareness and making sure we're just paying attention to health bars. And yeah, it's definitely something you do want to work on because it's essentially wasting time. Where, for example, we could be using that time to reload, or so that we actually have ammo when we're actually shoot needing it, yeah. right? Or we could be shooting, like just left clicking people, just getting out spam damage. You're looking for something else to do. So that is yes, I would. Uh, that is something you're going to want to try to try to fix. So we'll how extreme it is. We'll we'll keep taking a look at it. My turn. Okay. Um, it seems like sometimes here we're letting our tanks get really far ahead of us, so this exact same thing happened last time too, where the team walked in and we were on, they were on that side of the statue and we were on this side of the statue and the exact same ha thing happened twice here, and then that meant that Zarya died as a result. So make sure that when your team's rotating that you're rotating with them. So positioning wise, Baptiste basically wants to be sticking on top of his team. Now you don't want to be um, in front of them and you don't want to be inside of them you want to keep a nice basically just like right behind your tanks most of the time or right beside right behind the rest of your team but the further and further away we get we're going to see multiple things that start to go downhill so for example you're not going to be able to your your shift usage is a 10 meter radius so you're not going to be able to use your shift on your team your projectile shots are going to be more difficult to hit at a range on top of that it's going to take a longer time for them to actually reach their targets so that means that if somebody's low they're going to get healing slower that also does the exact same thing with your lamp it's going to be more difficult to land at a range and it's also going to they're going to be getting it slower which means that they could die before that you, you get it off the closer we are the closer that all of those things get resolved and means you're getting healing they're getting healing faster lamp faster they are you're actually gonna be able to use your shift on them and that means that basically baptiste like i just said is gonna want to play like kind of like right here on tanks where you're like kind of right behind them maybe like right here right but instead notice how we let them kind of walk super far in and then finally the last thing is that when you're walking like if you're trying to get past choke here if you're walking through when your tanks aren't there, they're going to be able to spam you super easily, right? They're just going to go pew, 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 and then you die. But if we're walking right behind our tanks, then we have shield, we have bubbles, we have big, fat tanks in our way that can block all the damage. So, um, you know, that we just want to make sure we're sticking with them here as twice we've actually let them just walk ahead of us. Okay. And then... Because we let them walk ahead of us, we end up um, not being able to heal Zarya here. We also just, when we see that she's critical, we want to make sure we're tossing out lamp there, just like around the corner if possible. So far, we have not used lamp. And keep in mind, lamp is a very, very important part of your kit. It is basically like a second ult on how it's kind of nuts how powerful it is. And we want to make sure that we're using it because when it's not used, it doesn't get value. And it also means we want to be looking for situations to use it, right? By paying attention to when is somebody in danger? Who's low? Who needs it, right? And if when we're doing that, we're going to be able to land it a bit easier. Because so far, we've had like two different situations where that would have been necessary. And we just haven't seen it and been ready for it. And then they died too fast. Okay. So... Genji that up there. We're looking for a lamp lamp. Pretty good usage of that. I like that. Um, we used that pretty fast. We didn't hold on to it, so that's good timing. We used it at the very beginning of the fight. Um, only thing is that we aren't necessarily paying attention to where the rest of our team is because we 
do still have like two teammates back in the choke here, which means that they're not really going to be able to do as much. So possibly here we could have waited till we grouped up a little bit more before we were going for our lamp. But I like the placement of it as well that we we're kind of placing in front of our team. Um, and we're, yeah, so, so far the placement's good as well. What we could have maybe done is, is kind of maybe gotten a little bit more of an angle with it so that, um, for example, like you could see more of the people around the corner and because you know you see how this is just kind of wasted right here in the corner but th that's about it so but the placement's pretty good the timing's pretty decent and i like that we're not holding on to it for four fights because that's something i've you know i've had to talk with people about is like yeah don't you know use your ultimate right don't never use it so that's th that's all looking good um we also kind of step in front of a reinhardt here and then that puts us real low and then we kind of panic through our lamp it looks like so yeah, we kind of react slowly, and then yeah, we kind of. I don't know why I threw that. There was like no yeah. actual threat there. Because mm, we had our shield in the way. So I guess I was down to sixty-one health, but mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah, so we were. I think we thought we were trying to save ourselves, but we didn't notice that we were getting healing and that there was a Ryan in front of us. So um, those were the two things we just wanted to pay attention to. So awareness is usually a slow builder of like kind of we need you. You basically you want to see like multiple instances of it before you start to say you have poor awareness. But so far we've seen a couple different things with our awareness. So we'll, awareness is looking like maybe something uh, that's gonna need to be taken a look at. Okay. Good shift usage there. Yep, fantastic mechanics. Looks like we like to do a lot of flicks though. Um, and I will just say that like there's there's times where flicking is necessary and times where it's not necessary. And when it's not necessary, it's actually going to be more detrimental than when it is necessary. So why don't we go over a couple of those times right now? So we're at 209. Um, we're just going to go to training range real quick and talk about flicks so flicks are necessary in a couple different situations right but they're not necessary in every situation so when we're trying to land flicks or we'll use left click here just as an example we can land a flick when there's a fast moving target so for example like there's a tracer blinking around us or reinhardt's getting charged right then we might want to flick so that we can hit these shots right really fast because they're blinking around us really fast or they're traveling at a fast pacing right which is going to mean that tracking is going to be a little bit more tough Right. You can also flick if you're surprised by something. So like if, for example, um, somebody just appears up on our like just appears on our screen. So we're shooting down here and then all of a sudden we, we, we see these guys up top. So we flick up to them. Right. Because they just appeared on our screen when we weren't already aiming at them. Or if someone, for example, snuck up behind us, then we'd have to like flick around to look at them. Like Tracer walks up behind us. Now we have to look at Tracer. Right. Those are times where flicking is necessary. But. If that's not the case, then there's no reason to flick, and flicking can actually be more detrimental to your gameplay because if we're already aiming straight at something or aiming next to something, and we shoot them, and then we like, kind of like look around, and then we come back to them, that means that we've just done unnecessary adjustment, and that means that the second shot is harder to follow up on because we're, we've just adjusted off of the person, right? So sometimes you've just been fl like looking frantically around and like and flicking and doing this, where like we like you kind of like uh, it kind of looks like you're frantically tr looking around, like you're always in a panic mode. Um, that can sometimes be harmful to you just because it can make shots more difficult to land, especially when flicking isn't a necessity, right? Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. It right. does. So we'll just hop back in. I think we we're like two minutes in. So we were on King's Row there. Now yeah, it was like 2.20 or something. 2 something. Oh, uh, we're on the same. Okay. How about a little extra? <laughs> so here on the Reinhardt, that's fine. But it's it, it's just it's more than on just on the Reinhardt. Okay. <laughs> watch health bars right that's another awareness thing like we were just talking about when someone's full hp we want to like whenever we have a lull in time where we don't need to do anything at all right we can't we weren't in a line of sight to shoot we weren't we everyone was full hp on our team right we don't need to do, be doing anything that's where we reload that way we just have ammo for when we actually get into the fight because here you could we could be coming into this fight and then having three ammo and then now reinhardt's actually like one hp and then now we don't have ammo to heal him right okay, um yeah so we just want to get, that's a good, like, reloading habits, where there we weren't really doing anything. And then, exactly like we just said, right, we're, 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 while we're, we're re in the middle of reloading, now Reinhardt's, like, 1 HP. Um, yeah. 
So that's just something to keep in mind there. In that case where he pushes up like that, where should I, what should I have been moving in yeah. closer so, to him? Or? There, he's probably not in the best positioning. You could probably just sit over here on this corner, right, and heal him fine from over here while in a safe position, right? Um, you, you should, like, it, this would just put us unnecessarily out in the open. So yeah, if, he, he's probably not in the best spot here. Like, if you, excuse me, um, if you have your teammate who's like maybe pushing to a spot that's not the best for you don't go with him right because you, you can still heal him from here and be doing the same thing but the the difference is like when we were back here and they were pushing around there we couldn't heal him from back here right and we yeah. that was a fine spot for us to be in so that's a it's a it's kind of situational where this is completely fine for us to sit back whereas before it wasn't fine for us to sit back so it's more like as the team's rotating you want to move with yep. them but you're in a fight yeah. Okay. Mm, or, sense. or if you know that they're gonna be going around the corner, um, like if, for example, like I don't like he'd have no reason to here. But like, let's say for example, we knew that our entire team wanted to go in this room, then we'd have to walk with them because otherwise we'd just be putting ourselves out of their line of sight. Or we can like you know go a different route or something like that. But if we know that our entire team's going around the corner, we need to go around the corner with them. Okay. All right. So with, there we got shattered, and that's because Reinhardt was in a poor position. So it's not really too much on us though. Um, potentially charging up a crouch to dodge it. Um, but yeah, besides that, we just have to be aware of that, which gets into ult tracking, um, which we can go over ult tracking if you're if you're maybe interested in that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's something that uh, I currently, I try to internally do, even mm. like in like uh, my team environment. Usually we're all kind of mm. throughout fights or at the end of fights feeling like, all right, this is what I have next fight or this is what we think they're at. Uh -huh. Sorry, I had this, or, you know, that, that's something I'm already doing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not as talkative, I guess, in actual competitive play, yeah. which I'd say is probably normal for a lot of people. But All right. So, yeah, it can, it can still sometimes, like, be pretty helpful, even if you're not talking with people in comp. And then this could also be a pretty helpful thing to translate into a team environment. Because even if, you know, it's good to have people assist with the process, but I think it's also even better to have one person kind of leading the, the charge on it because then yeah. that stops, like, cluttering of comms and people talking over each other and all that um, if you have a designated person to talk about it. So, I mean, it's up to you. Like, that's that's that would be going on, like, a five, seven-minute, like, a like thing to talk about. So are you interested can... in talking about that? We can circle back to that. I don't think it's as... All right. I, I'd rather mm -hmm. get to the, the more of the gameplay. Yep, that's I fine. Think. All right, so that's unfortunate. Yep. Like a good chatter on his part, knowing that the Ryan was up in his face and, it, you know, yep. his, uh, the other team was wide open there. A lot of overhealing. And no lamps being used. Okay, good DPSing and mechanics. I like the shift usage so far. Shift usage has been pretty great. But the other issues that we just, I think we've used lamp once and it was a whiff lamp in an unnecessary situation. So um, yeah. as a quick, because um, we're, we're like 30 minutes in here, um, as a quick strengths and weaknesses of like kind of what we're looking at at the moment ability usage particularly because shift isn't as strong of an ability but lamp is definitely a super strong ability ability usage is looking like it's a thing to work on um probably in the in like the medium high category of, of priorities of what we want to look at um yeah. ultimate usage i've seen one of them so far i want to see more before i start like to form an opinion but that one was actually looks pretty decent so that's probably on the lower end for the moment being um, maybe, maybe like low to medium at, at max. Um, then mechanics looking very fantastic. Not really any problems though. Um, really the only thing would be like just making sure we're not overhealing, which comes down to, um, awareness though. Um, yeah. so mechanics on the low, uh, on low end of things, of course, no one's perfect with it though. Um, it is on very much on the lower side, uh, probably 
one of our best things we're do working with at the moment. Positioning, um, we've had some talks about that so far with making sure it's with our team on top, being next to them, making sure we're not, you know, not lagging behind, um, and then also not, you know, walking in front of our tanks. That one is looking like in the medium category things, and then awareness is looking like that one's also top in the charts near the ability usage um, with a lot of overhealing because we're not paying attention to health bars, a lot of missed opportunities for lamp because we're not paying attention to when people need it. Um, and then that is looking like the two main ones I've seen so far, though we'll, I think there's been a couple others so I'm just not remembering at the moment. So that's what we're looking at at the moment in terms of what you're good and bad at and what needs to be worked on. Okay. And a lot more overhealing. Right, this is just time where like all overhealing time is just wasted time. And if you've seen how much there has been of that so far, it's we've been doing it for like multiple seconds of fight. Let's let's just put out a random number. Say that's like six seconds of fight. That really really adds up because yeah. that happens every single fight in a 20 minute game. Right, we've had so far like three fight. Like let's just say we have one fight every minute at a, on a low end or right? I you probably have many more fights than that so let's just say we have that right we uh, let's take out uh, two three minutes for you know in between rounds that's 17 minutes let's just say that's 17 times six and then by well, that that's that's just a, a round like uh, two minutes or like a minute and 40 seconds ish um, if we're going on the, on like on the low end which I probably would say it's even more than that maybe we're doing two fights in a minute so that's or something around that so that could even be d double that so that that's just giving out rough estimates of how much time we're wasting on that every single game if we're doing that so make sure we're yeah. shooting during, using that so like if we're just if, if everyone's fully treat reload shoot do damage try to look for a kill like you know look to use your abilities think about ults right just we want to be of so much time that we could be u using that for there's something you'd be doing in every single second of the game and there's never yeah. kind of a, a downtime in the game. And when we're doing that, it's just wasted time. Yeah. It's also, you could say it's time that I could be spent thinking about what the other team's doing or, yep. you know, being mm -hmm. aware of what's going on in the actual fight. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. Like focusing on awareness and ult tracking in your head or like, you know, thinking about what are we going to do with this fight, right? Just pl do, doing planning, right? That all That is all just wasted because we're dedicating brain power to something that doesn't need it. Yep. All right. So there that got dangerously close. So probably would just say at the very minimum, just uh, add in a shift just to get burst healing going when you see someone's critical. All right, that's just a good time to use shift to, to have two different sources of healing. Okay. Now we're looking for an ult soon here. They have no, we have a blade. Um, they have like shatter and crab, so we're probably gonna look to save our lamp for one of those if possible. But we also, yeah, we don't have we don't have any defensive ults. Okay, when we're throwing our lamp, make sure that it is going behind cover. So at the here, there's probably no like if we're trying to. Oh, okay, so let me rephrase this. Whenever you're throwing a lamp, it do, it's you want to make sure it has cover, right? We, it, we don't want to throw it on the open because when we throw it on the open, they're going to break it, right? And it's go down, going to go down instantly like this one did. So whenever possible, we throw it around the corner or we throw it in, in a doorway or something that blocks it from and makes it so that it stays up the entire duration because that went up and down instantaneously. So here... Yeah. There is no cover where we, if we're trying to save Reinhardt, but what we could do is throw it behind Reinhardt. Now that gets more people, and it also means that his shield blocks and keeps up the lamp, right? Because it that would make it a lot more difficult for people to actually break the lamp if it's behind the shield. But here we throw it like in front of him, and that just puts in the perfect position for them to destroy it. So lamp placement here is the problem. And well, you might be thinking, well, what if I'm just rushing, right? I don't have the time for that. Well, that's why we think that that's why we put brain power into thinking. If somebody was critical at this moment, where am I going to put lamp, right? We're, we're kind of pre-planning ahead of time. If I need to place lamp, where is it going, right? So we look for corners. We look for places to put it. If we if we see, okay, they're out in the open, we need to be able to, like, you know, be thinking about that ahead of time so that we're not panicking in the moment and placing in a bad spot, right? Because so far, that's even – that's this is emphasizing the point that lamp does need a lot of work because that lamp just wasn't very good. Though it, the timing was much better than the ones we've had in the past. Um, 
Nice kill shots. Alright. So we have our ult this next fight. That's enough out of you. There, that was a little bit far back, right? Um, put it a little bit closer. So, couple, couple different things. First off, um, the so the placement of this could have been much better. I love the timing though. Very early in the fight, we didn't hold on to it. Um, and the only reason why I didn't, we didn't use it last fight was just because we were already winning. And then on top of that, we looked to combo with the grab. The problem is that only half of us can shoot through it and it also required that they backed up to shoot through it like we when we place it look at how many people are actually looking through it we we go back here just slightly and then we they actually had to back up to be able to even shoot through it in the first place so i think zara especially zari had backed up so look look at the, look at our placement was the only reason zari was ahead of this when we placed it three of our teammates were ahead of this place it right in front of Zarya, and this is perfect, right? It's not like yeah. they can run in front of it because they're grabbed, and by the time they are ungrabbed, their shield's going to be broken. So we want to place it in front of our whole team so that our whole team gets value out of it. Um, also, placing it closer to the target is going to make it so that it, it kind of takes up more space when it's this far back. Um, it's kind of it's kind of spread out, if that makes sense. When we put it closer, it's going to be more condensed towards blocking. It. Like it's it's kind of in this choke point where we want it to be. Yeah. And then also on top of all that, the cart kind of pushes in to where it's like just it blocks off half of it, right? Because <laughs> like look, you, you can't even yeah. stand on this half of it anymore, and then that makes it even harder for Genji and, and Junkrat to get over to it. So placement there. One, yep. Good. One quick note. Mm -hmm. uh, so something, uh, and I think this is probably an issue. Just not, I don't think it's an issue, but. Uh, one of the things that uh, do in the in the scrims that we've been uh, doing and in, in practice was uh, doing window fire strike. Yep. So I'm, I'm if I'm if I'm trying to remember last night my my goal with that window was to combo with the fire strike, but at the same time, uh, you know, a lot of other things can use it. So I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, so it, if you put it in front of your whole team. Like it, it doesn't even. It, Reinhardt can still shoot through it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the same. So it's the same thing. Right, put it for the whole team, and then yep. everyone benefits. Exactly, including the Rhine. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Junkrat. On, on top of that, Junkrat can also one tap through it. So like on it, Junkrat, it, like Reinhardt would be like the best thing because he can get through shields. But Junkrat would probably be the second best thing here to even have it on because Junkrat yeah. can one shot through that, which would go through transcendence, which would kill things, right? Um, okay. Now, the, the other thing is just that you know it's. Uh, you might Reinhardt. I, I don't know if you're communicating here with him, but he might not even have sh have fire strike for it. But you know, if in any case, to, it just would. I, I feel like maybe he was talking mm -hmm. to me, or I don't remember exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just, so that was my first thought. So yeah, that that maybe that one maybe bumps our ult up slightly on the list to work on, just because that means it's slightly more inconsistent. So I think we put that on like low to medium before. So maybe we bump that up to like a medium thing to work on. Um, <laughs> Okay, maybe watch that a little bit clo uh, closer because there's a slightly, okay, so he's about to get charged here. So that's actually, that, that's fine. He's about to get charged, but I think they might actually, he might charge him out of the grab. Of the so um, the problem here, I think, is that we're a little bit too early with it um, because Reinhard, right now, Reinhardt is full HP. He has a shield up, which is also full HP, and there's only one person there. So right now, the only person that we're lamping is Reinhardt, who is actually not in danger at the moment, um, which he might be in danger soon, but lamping too early can mean that they have time to destroy it, e either on purpose or just by spamming it down. It could mean yeah. that it goes de it, it could mean that it just doesn't, like, I, I don't remember how long, do you know how long it lasts? Like, four seconds, six seconds? Um, uh, yeah, I think four, four or six. I don't four know. seconds, yeah. One. So one of the two. Um, that could mean that if like if you put it up two seconds early now that's half of it's gone before it even does anything right on top of that if we put it up too early that sets it in place and then if reinhardt gets charged out of the grab now lamp didn't do anything at all right um when we could have placed it after he got charged so let's watch what happens okay he gets charged out of the out of it and it breaks immediately so um lamp came a little bit too early there when maybe we could have used it 
when it was actually needed, right? So again, more lamp that needs work with timing, and I think there the placement was fine because he did behind the Reinhardt and did it semi near cover, but it just got destroyed because it was too early. Um, what? How did we get in the grab there? Did we leap into that? Hopefully. I'm yeah. About it. Oh. Probably too close. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we kind of walked into that one. Make sure we're paying attention to the grab and making sure we're not, you know, running into it and backing up away from it. And if anything. All right, let's just kind of, you know, brain fart moment that we just want to try to fix because we, <laughs> we we were clearly out of that and we just kind of went, woo, back, now we're in. And then because of that, we die, right? Just, you know, deaths obviously pretty bad. We want to look to cut those out and then something like that's just a awareness slash, you know, I don't even know, just awareness thing. All right. So we swap over to Ana. Are you so just I just to confirm here because I I think you said you swapped around a couple of different characters are is on a character that you want to go over or did you want to maybe swap uh, or like skip ahead to something else or what? Uh, that's a good question. I kind of wish I had stayed on Baptiste now. Mm -hmm. Um, we could probably skip ahead. I I'm trying to remember. I think I possibly do we. Uh, I guess it's worth looking at. Uh. I think I went Lucio at the very end. Right. Yeah, you swap Baptiste back back to Baptiste. Would you like to go over the honor or the Baptiste here, or the you know the take the Baptiste, take the Baptiste take all right? The Baptiste. Mm. All right. Ready for battle. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. Defend objective A. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think through this real quick. Not the worst positioning, though we, we're going to run into some of the, the similar um, problems I talked about before with just how being this far away from our team can cause a couple of problems with, with it, though we do also get the benefit of being on the high ground, which can help out. Um, so honestly, that might even counteract the fact that we're, we're slightly off with some stuff here. So, yeah, okay, and then we drop anyways, so we're good. Maybe unnecessary shift there. Shift. Yeah, didn't you make it, sir? yeah, exactly. Shift most of the time is just gonna be needed in one of two situations. When we need healing, right, and we don't have like a health pack or other support next to us, um, or we just don't want to, you know, have them look at us, or if our team needs burst healing, right? When they need burst healing, we get when we shift, we get two separate sources of healing, which heals them extra fast. So that's gonna be necessary when they're low health or in danger, right? Um, in this situation, no one's really low at all and no one's in danger and we didn't need it. So that's just maybe a necessary shift and it's a 12 second cooldown. So we want to make sure we're just not wasting it though. Of course, like shift is not nearly as powerful as lamp is. So it's not as big of a mistake though. It is still a thing to pay attention to and look at. All right. Lamps out in the open, right? So just couple inches to the right gets the ex like so like for example right here gets the exact same effect uh, except for it's going to stay up longer um i think it's a decently good lamp because we're using it when zarya is low and she doesn't have a shield up for herself so that guarantees she stay a lot stays alive but that lamp's just going to go down instantly just because it doesn't have proper placement on top of the fact that um right now we're we i don't think we've reloaded properly and then now we're stuck at three ammo when we have a bunch of people who are like one hp so we just gotta be careful about that all right so yep yeah, again it gets destroyed all right it goes down all right and then we won the fight i think something just to mention real quick yep uh, good. And i i don't really like i know that i do it but when i i don't know there's times where i will throw a lamp out and i treat it like a winston bubble almost like a hmm. You guys can play in this area for a second, but even if I were to do that and place it in a good spot, it's still better than it get, getting burned immediately. But that's just something that I'm, I'm thinking out. Oh, yeah, I so guess, using yeah, it to that. keep you... Yeah, so you're always... Whenever it's an option, you're always trying to give it cover. Though, using it as a Winston bubble... Like, as, if you're just tossing it straight out in the open on like almost on purpose, that's a pretty bad way to use it because then it's just yeah, not going to be yeah. up very long. But... I do say I will say that that strat that is a strategy that is used by higher level players is like hey you're not gonna die here go and stand in it so for example um let's say that th this a common thing 
that was used back when like BAP was like an ultra meta, um, yeah. like a while ago was think think of like uh, let's let's say like Hanamura, right? Um, let, let's say the choke point, right, where you have to try to walk through the choke. Mm-hmm. You'd be on yep. attack, and what you do is like that's a really h- hard choke to get past. But what they do is they just like throw a lamp on the corner and say like, "Hey, feed for me. Just stand still and let them shoot at you. Like, and it'll just drop your shields." They drop their shields, feed for the Baptiste. Baptiste would just like heal them all up and keep heal, 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 heal. Get his ult up insanely fast, and then now they'd have it like have a like a super insanely fast ult to push in off of, right? That's yeah. like a strat that was used at higher levels of play. So I'm not so there. That is actually a pretty that that's a valid uh, like way to use it. You just want to make sure that when you are doing it like that, that it's uh, that you're not. Get, that's a situation where. When you're sitting at choke like that, you're not gonna need it for defense anytime soon because you know your whole team's playing off of that, right? They know that yeah. they're not gonna get aggressive anytime soon, and usually the teams don't push past choke, right? But on defense, yeah. that might not be as good of a thing to do because they're pushing into you, right? They're kind of setting yeah. the the engagement, and then yeah, on top they of that, not push into it exactly. They, yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, just you might you also want to keep good cover with it, anyways. Here, we're a little bit far back, right? Here, we can't really see our team. So, might, might want to just be, like, on the on the right side corner where we were before. Like, on the bottom. Yeah, yeah so, so we rotate. Oh, Positioning is honestly not too terrible from what we're looking at. I, For the most part, I like it. Okay, tunnel vision slightly. Yeah, just want to make sure we're paying attention. Yep. Yeah. Not paying attention to our environment. Lamp probably was not necessary there. All right, no one's too low. No one's in danger of dying at the moment. Um, now Zarya might be in a second here if, like, she, if Reinhardt keeps getting on her. That's like a wacky bent hammer there. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Zarya might need it in a second, but again, it's just too early if she does need it because she doesn't need it at the moment so we just want to make sure we're paying attention to health bars and when people need it and like as you see no one actually dipped low enough for it to do anything right? yeah and then now in a moment here the, oh wait, that's our sorry that's their blade i thought that was um i thought that was sorry that's our blade i thought that was their blade for a second i thought i was about to say oh yeah and then now they have a blade um so la- windowing for yourself is is a not a terrible thing to do sometimes, but it's very situational. Um, yeah. If your whole team's right in front of you, just put in front of your whole team because you do the exact same thing. Now, if you're yeah. trying to purposefully um, use it on yourself to, for example, get amplified healing, let's let let's say they're all in a grab and we're trying to like keep them alive by getting twice the healing in on top of them. That's fine. Yeah. If you place it in front of them, then you wouldn't even be able to use it, right? Um, yeah. If you're like, for example, let's try to say you're trying to like do you DPS with it real quick. Let's say you're just like we're up here and then you're just trying to DPS on them. Then you can use it on yourself. Like let's say we're trying to get the echo, use it on yourself. But in this situation where we're not really needing the amplified healing and we're not dueling anything particular, just place it in front of your tanks. Right. Besides that, the timing's all right. Just the placement. Uh, that that seeming like a, a kind of a a theme with it yeah. is the timing's good the placement's off though we just want to make sure we're putting in front of our team putting it you know in the right place because here as well they're just going to push around the i think the ana we're definitely gonna be able to kill with this but the reinhardt's just going to charge around the corner and then there's only one person that we killed with it right and that's it yeah i think we also stepped in front of it <laughs> all right oh, yeah I, th- I think we we accidentally stepped in front of that too <laughs> yeah Yeah, a little bit of overhealing. Okay, no. Overhealing at the moment. Shift not necessary. Right, just pay, uh, more awareness, right, of paying attention to our environment. When we know what's happening around us, right, awareness is just knowing what's happening around us. When we know what's happening around us, we, we are now capable of making good decisions. When we have no clue what's happening, we are incapable of making good decisions. So if we, if we have poor awareness, we're just going to keep making bad decisions. If we have good awareness, we're going to be able to make good decisions. So that's just how the chain of command works when it comes to awareness and decision making. We want to make sure we're being aware of like, hey, these guys are all full HP. And then, therefore, we're not wasting abilities. Therefore, we're not wasting time and resources, right? When we could be reloading, when we could be doing something else. And then that's just been something that's continued on. Right. 
right? Like didn't need that, didn't need <laughs> that right? He's not again, he's low, but you know, uh, low isn't always in, the same thing as in danger. I don't think I yeah. So let's say like someone's critical and they're like right here, are they in danger? Mm-hmm. No, because they're you know around the corner, safe, right? When when they're yeah. not in danger, then the the then the lamp's not needed, right? I'll have enough time to right click them and heal them. Exactly, before. right? Yeah. And and that could be the pretty much the same concept with your shift, though. Sometimes if like you're just trying to get a tank back in the fight fast, then you can use your shift to just burst them back up to health, and then now they can push back in faster. But sometimes that could be the same concept. It's it that'll be dependent. All right. No, that, that one was, wasn't the best, but it was also in between a fight, so it doesn't matter too much. I also feel like I was kind of jumping way more than I needed to. Mm. I'm like spamming my jump. Yeah, so that, yeah, jump spamming is just a bad habit to get out of. It's not It's not something that's going to get you up an entire rank, um, though it is just a tiny thing to work on as... It's a bad habit to be in because when you jump, you you're an easier target to hit in headshot. So, yeah. like especially the higher up in ranks you go, uh, jumping is a very trackable animation. So when you go up, you have to come down, and therefore you can get headshot out of that very easily, especially by hit scan characters. So, like I yeah. said, it's a it's a thing to work on. Though I probably want to say it's the most important thing to work on. So, like it probably okay. go on a low, like a very low end, like even below, like mechanics and and positioning. Um, it'd uh-huh. be like one of the bottom things, though it is still a thing, right? I think more or less I was just trying to think of like, don't I'm trying I'm trying to cut down on like the nervously moving and overhealing and yep. doing unnecessary things when mm-hmm. I shouldn't be. But. Yeah, yeah, of course, and I I definitely say that overhealing is is gonna be a much much bigger thing than. Yeah. Than just jumping around will be because jumping around's not something that's gonna be punished too much at this rank, and um, it's not the biggest deal. But overhealing's wasting minutes of your gameplay, so that that is definitely a big thing. Yep. All right, here we let, let's rewatch as I was talking. So we get shattered. Let's see how how do we get shattered. So Sigma's a little bit out of position here. He gets charged. Um, old tracking would maybe let us know, but then also maybe just playing closer to cover. Like if you're, for example, like you're playing over here near a doorway, you might be able to duck around the corner before the shatter lands. Here we're playing slightly yeah. out in the open. Um, so just keeping, like so far we've had a pretty good, we've, we've been doing pretty good with this, but just keep in mind that good positioning is the usage of cover. Bad positioning is the absence of cover. Usually you have to talk about that with people, for the, but for the most part we have it down. But here we could have maybe just been a little bit closer to cover. Um, and then because we weren't, we end up dying yeah I, there's a possible chance i switch here i mm. don't remember exactly no i didn't okay okay good awareness uh we don't have our team with us so it looks like we're backing out that's a good thing to do you're fully here let me show you how it's done i just threw a heal at the enemy i just realized i don't know why i did that Oh, did you like DC or something, or did you just have a massive brain fart? Okay, placement again, put it in front of your Sigma, right? That way he can get value out of it too. Um, now, actually, he you might you might not want to place it directly on top of Sigma because then they could the Reinhardt could just walk past it. But maybe even yeah. just like slightly more forwards, like that way. Um, it, if Sigma just backed up, he would be, be in it faster, right? If that makes sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, we don't pay attention to Sigma with the lamp, right? Again, paying attention to when does somebody need lamp? Do I need to throw a lamp down? Also, keeping in mind that um, throwing a lamp down on the, like on this corner could also allow you guys to just more freely shoot through the through shoot through it without feeling pressured um especially if you see that people are low at the same time you can get that dual effect going All right but yeah. there we just we kind of tunnel visioned on our lamp and then completely forgot about sigma when he or sorry we tunnel visioned on our ult and then we completely forgot about sigma All right and then now now right now we use lamp that that was honestly pretty good timing of it we saw Reinhardt was on top of us and then we lose anyways yeah i think this might be where i switch Nope, I don't. Nope. Okay. Maybe it was just on attack. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, that's where we just toss in a lamp. So um, when we see that our Genji is trying to get super, super aggro, you just toss in a lamp after him. That'll allow him to just sit inside of the lamp and just swing for free. And that creates basically... Um, that basically is going to allow him to just get away with it for free and give him more time to swing on things. If they look at lamp, then that's time where they could have been shooting at Genji and he gets to do things. So if we see our Genji, like our teams, like uh, also the other thing to keep in mind is like, where's the one place our team needs to be? Uh, here? Yeah, here. Hmm? Uh, I guess. They, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. Point. Exactly what you're... Yeah, okay, well, yeah, obviously. Right. I think that yep. was an obvious thing, especially with it being as close as it is. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So the point I'm trying to get at is because the one place we need to be is point, we need to make sure, we're th like, if we throw in a lamp here, that's where it's actually going to get the most value. And we're not, like, this is, we're, it's already looking like we're, like, semi on the losing side of this fight um, because we're already down, but we could very easily get a, you know, a win out of this. Like, if we if we do combo this correctly, we could very, very easily get a, get win this fight. Um, so Lamp just needed to be thrown in there because that allowed Genji to do things, right? But we don't, and then Genji gets shattered and died, and we could still be throwing Lamp, but we don't, right? And then just because we're not using it properly, it just doesn't get as much value, right? Now that one was pretty decent, but it just would have been better if we used it slightly earlier. They wouldn't even, they wouldn't have as many people alive to even shoot at you if it, yeah, uh, and your team more value out of yep. his being alive. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Also, let's look at positioning real quick there. It looks like we were... Oh, a little too far back. So, positioning-wise, we're slightly on the open. So, positioning either, like, in this left room here or on the right side. And probably not on the right side, because then that would put us off from the Zarya. But, like, look at where we're at. We could just very easily walk over here, and then this puts them out of their our line of sight. But here we okay. walk... We're kind of walking out in the open and staying here too long and just kind of dancing around in the middle. And then that means that they can shoot at us for free. Um, so we're out in the open for too long there, and that got us killed. So again, remembering that good positioning is the usage of cover. When we put, when we can go like this, right, where we go boop, right, they can't see us, right, half of a second versus when we're standing in the middle here, where it takes two or three seconds to get to something. That's what kills us is when we're, or at least that's one thing that can kill us is when we're out in the open like that. All right, gotcha. now we're going to take the last couple minutes here to talk to go over a review, um, talk about the main points, and then also wrap up the session from there. So, uh, Baptiste, we just we went over him the whole time. So I, I think yeah, yeah, we I forgot we just I thought we swapped over to Ana for a second there, but then I was like, no way, never mind. We stayed on Bath. So um, ability usage, we'll start off there. Um, probably one of the biggest things we're looking to work on. Lamp need, needed a whole lot of work. Um, so things that we need to work on with lamp make sure it's like around corners and we're trying to use objects you can use doorways like this pillars um anything that you can you yourself can use to duck around cover your lamp can also use right so corners pillars doorways right things that shields that can block it will keep it alive longer and let it do more we want to work on the timing as well both paying attention to who needs it right is somebody in danger right there are a couple times where we threw it when somebody didn't actually need it and there were some times where we didn't throw it when somebody did need it right so, so paying attention to when people are actually in danger and when they aren't in danger as well as paying attention to um the best places to use it there are also some times where we just kind of went whole fights without using it so we want to make sure that we're actually using the ability because when it's not used it doesn't get any value right um, you get that thing like maybe once po or once possibly twice a fight. Um, so we just want to make sure that we're using it once or twice a fight, not not using it for like a fight or two in a row, right? Um, okay. Shift usage. Make sure that, again we're paying attention to health bars. So like we're not using we're using it for two purposes: when we need healing or when our team needs burst healing, and then that's pretty much it. Um, make sure we're not using it when our team doesn't need it. Um, that's the big thing with it. Also, just keep in mind yeah. the range of it, as it is a 10 meter range. So that's going to be from um, here to there, right? Anything past that, you're going to notice that it doesn't actually do any healing, right? Um, if you're within yeah. this, then it does do healing. Gotcha. Right. Um, now, moving on to ult usage, good timing with it. 
Um, there's sl a slight timing issue, like just on the on the first one that we used, where like we just used it slowly too early when we had some people walking back from spawn. But besides that, the timing was pretty much great. The only issue was that we just would constantly do this, where our team would be in front of us, like right next to us, and we just play sit here when we could just do this right in front of everyone, right? Yeah. So just make sure we're putting in front of our team. That was really the only thing with it. Um, it was the repetitive thing that happened. Um, besides that, moving on to ability, or sorry, uh, mechanics. Mechanics, pretty solid. Um, the one thing I would note is that uh, we didn't talk in depth about this, but just make sure that you're aiming head level when we're trying to shoot at enemies. This isn't something you need to do when you're right-clicking because those don't do body shots and you actually want to hit the floor with them. But when you're shooting at enemies, you want to be hitting headshots, not body shots. And when you're aiming at head level, this becomes easier than if you're aiming at body level. And I was noticing that we were hitting quite a few body shots when we were just shooting at enemies. So make sure we're aiming at the head level so that becomes easier, though we didn't talk in depth about that. Um, Do you have any quick tips for alternating between how you're aiming? Like, because I know you like a, a big thing with Baptiste is you can weave your healing in with your left click. Mm -hmm. Is there? Do you have any tips on? Uh, I guess alternating between. I guess yeah, you're doing it right now. Okay. Yeah. So you can look. Uh, it becomes a little bit tough. Um, the the thing is like if you're if you're trying to hit shots, you might want to not care as much about your right clicks because your left clicks are need to be more accurate, right? Your left clicks require more precision than your right clicks do. So don't go out of your way to, for example, like unless somebody's critical. Of course, prioritize it if somebody's low, but don't go out of your way um, to heal like to like to land the healing shots that's more of the spammy one right you're if you're trying to do both of them at the same time you're kind of you're kind of doing this where you're like you're just right clicking um sorry you're you're right clicking into the um into your team right um yeah. and then it's just kind of hitting them rather than rather than trying to purposely aim that one and then the left click really just spam right um it could be either or but like usually you're going to prioritize the left click right but besides yeah. that mechanics looking really solid not too much of an issue with those um, moving on to positioning, sometimes like uh, positioning honestly looked pretty decent, though we, we it was slightly inconsistent, and there were once in a while, like especially like there there were two times near the end where we just were out of uh, positioning. Um, so remember, usage of cover is good positioning. The absence of cover is bad positioning. So if we're standing here, it takes us a bunch of time to run over to the corner, and now we're safe, right? But when we're standing here, it just takes us half a second, right? Um, so this is much better positioning. Make sure using corners and cover and objects that can block damage. Um, besides that, make sure we're next to our team because, um, so like, instead of being like oh, all the way back here, right, instead of doing this, right, where this is, you know, making it so there's a delay in your between your shots, it means that there's a delay before they get lamp, it means that they, our shift can't reach them, instead make sure we're standing closer like this, where we're behind where, where we're behind them, right, Ro if we're trying to rotate through the space, go with them as well, but if they're going into a dangerous position, maybe just sit back a little bit, right? Yeah. Um, Finally, awareness. This one was pretty big as well. Um, make sure we're paying attention to your health bar and when you need healing, because there were some times where like, we, we would just shift when we didn't need it, and then that could possibly feed into that a little bit, so just pay attention to when you need healing. Um, pay it. attention to health bars for enemy. This is probably one of the biggest awareness things, is pay attention to your teammate's health bars, because this will dictate two different things. Or, sorry, three different things. One... You're overhealing, right? When you your overhealing comes from you not paying attention to health bars. When you see, oh snap, this person's full HP. Now we can reload, right? Now we can look for something else to do. Overhealing was a pretty massive thing. Make sure we're not doing that. This also will allow us to land lamps better. When we see people who are, who are low and in danger, this is going to allow us to land lamps better. On top of that, that's going to allow us to hit shifts better. When we're paying attention to people who are, you know low HP, that's when we can use burst healing. So the paying attention to health bars is going to help us do all three of those better, right? Um, okay. On top of that, awareness-wise, pay attention to where the enemy team is at as well. Pay attention to when your teammates are in danger, as that's going to allow you to use lamps better. Also, just think ahead and plan for where do I want to use our lamp. So if we're seeing our team's positioned right here, right? We can think in our head, okay, if they need healing, if they need a lamp, I'm going to lamp there or here. If they push forwards, I'm going to lamp up there, right? If we back up maybe to this corner somewhere, I'll lamp on the corner, right? We're just, th we're in our head, we're thinking about spots. That way, if we do need lamp, it's coming out like extra fast, right? It we're getting it out and it's in good placement, right? Um, and then I think that that is pretty much it. Um, so main points, I'm going to put ability usage as, actually... Let's see, I'm going to put awareness as number one because that actually fed into a whole lot of things, including ability usage. Um, so awareness goes as number one. Ability usage comes in at number two. Number three comes in at ult usage 
number four at positioning, and then number five at your mechanics. All right. Okay. Any questions about anything we talked about? No. I mean, it's all. Uh, it all makes sense. Um, there's a handful of things you just said that, like, major light bulb went off in my head of kind of what I'm doing, what I should be doing, and if I'm already thinking about things, I'm I'm not going to be panicking trying to do them if I'm already yep. preparing for it. So, exactly right. Plan, planning ahead of time means that you essentially can react faster, right? Pl planning like uh, planning ahead of time with like your lamps or anything, your ults or whatever, can mean that you're reacting faster to the thing that's coming. And when mm -hmm. you're just when you're not planning, then that just leads to you doing a panic lamp. Sometimes even when it's not necessary, right? Yep. All right. So then I'm going to end the recording here.